Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for this lesson. This mark making lesson which is going to focus on using the pen to create an image that is full of energy but also looks just like us. Now hopefully you've got an image which you've either drawn straight yourself or traced. Either way works because it doesn't really matter because what we're trying to get down here is that energy, those marks and really exploring using that pen. So to start off with make sure that you have that sugar paper underneath your work to soften the marks that you're making so that we don't carve into the paper and also make sure that you've got some sugar paper to lean on on top as well. So as you see we started with the eye. I tend to find this the best place to start simply because it's one of those areas that have a really vast range of tone within them. You've got the darkest tones in there and you've also got the lightest and it helps really cement the image just looking like you. So you start off just underneath the eyebrow and in the corner and you just work your way around, building up those tones using a combination of cross hatching and of just straight line marks. We're not shading like a pencil, we want those marks to show. We want that energy to come through. Now as you've seen, I've slowly worked my way down to the nose. I'm not going fully in with the darkness yet. By starting with a slightly lighter layer of tone, we allow ourselves to not go too dark and make a mistake too soon. Because remember, with pen, we can't rub out. What you put down is what you get. All right, so we can always build up things and make them darker later on, but we don't want to go too dark right now. So we work our way around the nose, remembering that it is not just two massive holes in your face. There's folds of skin which need to be acknowledged. Now we've jumped down to the mouth. The mouth is a bit tough, but always remember that your top lip, typically, especially when a photo is being taken from the front, um, typically the light will be on your bottom lip and the shadow will be on your top lip simply because your top lip turns to face downwards. And for a lot of us, our top lips are darker as well. So build that up using directional shading and directional mark making to help you show the curve of the lip. And you can see that happening here now. Paying attention to the details, not going over those lightest parts on the upper or lower lip. So we'll continue filling that in. Now for those of you with moustaches or beards, um, do not put those in yet. Um, that should be something that you put in towards the end. As tempting as it may be, leave that till right at the end. For now, just try and get the general tone of your face. If there's anywhere where it's a super thick beard or a super thick moustache, just leave it for now. All right, focus on the skin, focus on the face. That's what we want. Because if you put those in too soon, chances are you'll end up not looking like yourself. Now we're just putting that tone underneath the lips, underneath the mouth and it's quite dark there where it dips in and the chin juts back out so make sure that you get that and that the shape is correct. If the shape is not correct then you risk making the jawline not look like yours which will have a knock on effect on the entire image. While working on the lower chin or the upper chin the sixth of the chin underneath the, the, the mouth basically. When working on that, I realized that my eye, my pupil specifically wasn't dark enough. So I went back and added a little bit more to that. And then I went back down to the lower chin. Now I've gone back up to the other eye because I th thought that's enough for the mouth section. We now need to fill in that left section. Now in the original image, you may see that um, the left side of my face, which we're seeing as the right side, of course, is much darker. So I'm going to try to input that. But I'm also going to be a bit wary here. I'm not going to build up too much tone. I actually like it when my pen drawings and some of my pencil sketches as well don't use the full breadth of the tone. Um, and it's up to you how you take this. Of course, don't be lazy and leave it too pale. But at the same time, how dark you want to make it, whether you want to really put that ink down, that's up to you. So what you'll notice as I work my way through this is that the, the right side of the image doesn't get too dark, although it is distinctively darker than the left side, which is where most of the light is coming from. So here I'm just building up some of the tone around the right side of my nose in the image. And we're just putting in the section above 
the upper lip so this is around the cupid's bow where there's a reasonable amount of shadow because of course um, this area it dips in and it comes back out and also it's underneath the nose which is a big jutting out section of our face so that area tends to have extreme light and extreme dark so pay attention to that and be sure you, you acknowledge the shape of the nose as well those major three bulbous parts the small little um, bits which are your nostrils around your nostrils and that central bone which makes up the main part of your nose as you can see I'm starting to pop around a bit more because as I fill in one part it will have a knock on effect on somewhere else you make somewhere darker another part will start to appear lighter so you need to bear that in mind as you work through this so you'll see me jumping around a lot more as the piece progresses you know before I mentioned that um, section You know that before I mentioned um, that we have a spare piece of paper to make sure that I don't smudge the work. That's what you just saw pop in there on the side. And now we're about to just add in that tone around the eye. And as you can see, it's starting to look a bit more like myself. Okay, so that's good. That shows that we're being fairly accurate when it starts to look like us. So we're really sending that eye back now and filling in the darkness on the right side of the image. To be fair, I could have gone darker here, and this is what I'm talking about. I could have gone darker here. Maybe I should have if I'd had more time. This image, of course, took 45 minutes to create. I would hope that if you are doing your own one, it will take you closer to two hours. This expanse on my forehead, I've just filled it in roughly. So no major detail here, although, of course, there is some undulations, especially just above the eyebrows, where you get certain bones sticking out slightly um, and I've tried to give a hint of that but I haven't gone majorly detailed with it and now I just had adding the hints of shape on the left side where the light is shining so it's of course a lighter section but we still want to put in those hints the ears are pretty tough to do but just try your best um, don't rush them don't forget them but definitely the ears are a tough thing to do. Just try and get them as accurate as possible. There's a lot of um, high contrast areas within the ears, but we want to make sure that we're getting that full range of tone in there still, and that we're showing that they do fold round the way they do. Moving on to the neck, notice I still haven't done the beard or the moustache or the hair. Okay, so moving on to the neck now, just adding in the tone there, very extreme um, variations in tone. And for me, I haven't got much angles or anything on my neck itself so it can be tough <laughs> because it is an area which looks quite flat even though it's not so you just have to try and work with the tones that are there and squint your eyes to help you see the different variations because squinting your eyes of course increases that contrast helps uh, the darks become darker and the lights become lighter so you can work from those nice big strokes for the, these big areas and I'm just building up layer after layer to get those darker tones just trying to keep it neat okay no scribbling but carefully placed marks that we're thinking about. Everything we want should be purposeful, pre-planned. Mistakes might be made, but that's a mistake which you made the choice to make. And so then you have to make the choice to correct it. Okay, good. So now I think we're ready to start on the hair. So with this, we're gonna try and imitate that texture. Um, for me, my hair is quite curly, so I'm going to go in with these sort of really curly, slightly untidy lines, but they're controlled, so they still don't look like scribbles. They're nice, they're controlled, they're purposeful, and I work my way around. Now for me, the way the picture looked, it completely blacked out my hair. There's barely any tone there, so I'm just going to replicate that. There's no need to put in any fake tone. The idea will still be made. The impression, the representation of myself will still be there. So we're just gonna work around to make sure that there's little tiny flecks coming off where my hair goes loose and points upwards. I'm just gonna continue filling that in. So your certain bits come off the screen. And we'll keep going until it is finished and that will do for now. So then, 
with that we might as well then jump onto the bed so same sort of thing be careful this is not something that you just fill in with scribbles it's not something that you put in thick thick lines that just block it out or black it out completely pay attention to how your hair curls where it's thick where it's thin allow the paper and allow the tones underneath to show through and just build that up Okay, here there's a slight bit of um, asymmetricality going on here. Of course, we're not perfectly symmetrical, but we're working with the image here. If you can see that it's looking slightly off, even if it is accurate, just correct it. All right, use that artistic license. Try and make that a bit more symmetrical. All right, it starts to look a lot like, more, more like me. So I'll keep working. If we can, let's put in some of the imperfections as well. Uh, so put in any spots that we have, any scars that we have. All right, those help make us who we are. There we go. Excellent. So now just gonna outline the rest of my shirt. I'm not actually gonna do my shirt in this one because that will take quite some time because there's patterns on it. But hopefully this is enough for you to go with. So thank you for watching this. Hopefully when you try your own, it'll be really successful. If not, just keep trying until you get it. Because remember, we don't just want it to look hyper-realistic. All right, that's another skill for another time. What we want is energy in this piece. And something really solid that gives an impression of who you are and your knowledge of that pen and of those marks. So, go for it, all the best.